Oh, you guys want to go right inside already? Come on, I'm not going inside yet. Come on. Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Angel from Nobleman's Apothecary, Nobleman's Exchange on YouTube. All right, so it's about two days after I initially put the first coat of the the marine weld to patch up the leak that we had in the black water tank. Um, so it's two days later. It looks good so far, but I'm gonna do uh, my due diligence and just put another, basically just gonna use the rest of this stuff. Um, I used about one fourth to one third of um, what came in the package. And I think I'm just gonna mix up the rest and just uh, slather it on nice and thick and just give it a little bit more uh, security. Um, and you guys are gonna watch. All right. So they're building new houses right behind us. So that's where we get all the good music from. So I'd, actually, I didn't mix the whole rest of it. <laughs> I felt like I had enough. <clears throat> I felt like I had enough mixed up. So I just went and put a little bit more. So all in all, there's about, I used about two thirds of what came in there. I think we'll be okay. I think this is... My biggest fear is that this tank still flexes. So, depending on how flexible this is when it cures, will be a big determination as to how good this patch will hold up. The crack was right around that edge right there. And this tube, the outlet tube, was not even secured properly. So you see I'm wiggling it and you don't see any movement. So the only movement comes when I push on the tank so my again so my fear is that once if this gets full to the point where it starts flexing downward i feel like it might give a little bit more stress to this already uh compromised area hopefully this fixes it but uh i don't know only one way to find out right
I better get off the ground before the rest of these guys start crawling on me. Oxy on my head. Good, good. Yeah, man. Um, I think we're in good shape. I don't see any other leaks anywhere, so. Gray water looks to be in good shape as well. Little things like that, like you see duct tape, like random duct tape, like what the heck is that for? Uh, oh well. So let's get out of here. Let's get out from under this. Um, the only last, well, two things on the checklist that I know of so far is. <clears throat> Tiny pinhole leak in the freshwater tank, and um, two outlets that don't work in the master suite, which I'm not really too concerned about. Um, I didn't see any loose wiring, anything that would be, anything that would cause an arc and start a fire, or anything. So everything looks buttoned up. It might just be a terminal that's bad in the breaker. Um, other than that brakes and markers lights turn signals which is easy wiring if it needs to be fixed but uh, that's it um, all right let's head over to the nobleman's workshop i got some belts to make why don't you guys hang out with me while i make a grizzly belt sound like fun let's go let's do it roxy come on you ready to go inside? You ready to go inside, Shadow Boy? You ready to go inside, Shadow Boy? <laughs> come on, Roxy. Come on, my old lady. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. Let's go inside. This old lady, she ain't rushing for nobody. Her front shoulder is looking good. Her front left shoulder. She's dealing with some arthritis. Old lady. She's usually limping on that shoulder, but today she seems like she's a little more comfortable. Good. All right, guys, come on. All right, guys, welcome to the Nobin's workshop. Today, I'm going to finish up. This is called the Grizzly Belt. It's a golden. It's a golden rough out veg tan leather. Hand dyed by myself. Get your finished side, and rough outside. So, woo. We've got our edges beveled, sanded, round. Right now we're going to wax the edges and then burnish them.
So I applied the wax onto the edges. Now, use our rotary tool and apply some smooth friction and get a nice smooth edge. See here. Okay, not sure if you can tell. See the edge is nice and finished now. It's got that nice warm honey brown edge color, nice and smooth. It's not rough, it's not fuzzy like the surface is anymore. Um, that light line there. Oops, I'm sorry. Still working on this GoPro angle. This uh, this light line there, so honey brown edge, nice and smooth. The edge there, you see that kind of a light line, almost looks white. That's uh, just excess residual wax. And uh, we get that, ugh. we take that off before we package it. Uh, actually, I think I'll do it, I usually do it before I, uh, Put the buckle on it at the end there. Next, my favorite part, I'm going to brand the Nobleman's X into the tail. Hashtag brand by hand. Nobleman's Workshop. Next step, we're going to mark for our belt holes, our tongue holes. This gentleman has a size 36. Oh. 
front on it. Here's your holes. One, two, four, five, six, seven holes. Nice, nice. Next is now. How many times do we measure before we cut and punch? Twice. Rice. Hey, Tuesday. Start the day with two orders, baby. That's how we do it. Yes. It's always a pleasure to start the day with orders in the queue, like new purchases coming in the website. Love it. You guys are incredible. You guys rock. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So today's Tuesday. Start the day with two orders. That's what I'm talking about. Let's do it. All right. So this customer ordered a size 36. If you're familiar with the sizing guy, that's uh, 36 inches from the point where the leather wraps around the buckle, where the leather wraps around the buckle to the, to the center hole, one, two, three, four. So that center hole, that'll be uh, 36 inches. And uh, pretty simple sizing guide. I updated it so it's just more accurate. I was trying to implement vanity sizing and whoever invented vanity sizing you can go have some fun somewhere else but um so we're back to true to size partnering with uh bull high denim co he does true to size so i felt it was only right customers buying britches through bull high denim co and buying a belt by no one's apothecary two companies that have done a collaboration together I think it only made it sense to simplify the sizing guides all across the board. So true to size, just a little quick rundown on the, the way we size here at Nobleman's Apothecary. All right, so we're gonna measure. Let me change this angle once again. To your center hole. One, two, three, four. Center hole. Down to, you can get this. 36. Todo bien. Everything's good. Everything looks good. So this machine right here has a, a bearing roller, an adjustable depth stop, and this fat carbide uh, steel, super sharp over here. Be careful. So that's a note for myself, check your depth. I've spent hours making a belt in the past, didn't check my depth. I was doing so another project, something really quick and I forgot to put the depth back and I completely ruined the belt so I had to remake it. And that was funny. Okay, so 
so he shaves, shaves a leather, shaves a layer, very thin leather, layer off, about one ounce. That will make it easier, look how much tighter I can get that, so much easier. The other thing that splitting the, the leather around the buckle attachment area, another thing that that does is make it a look, an overall lower profile when it's sitting on the waist. All that leather bulging and kind of curving out in a larger diameter, it's gonna push your belt buckle further away from your jeans. It's gonna push your leather further through that belt buckle. And whether you wanna tuck your shirt in or leave it, you know, untucked, it's just gonna be, it's just gonna be bigger and just more bulky and more, uh, less comfortable so uh, I learned a lot of that stuff uh, making holsters I used to make holsters years ago and uh, inside the waistband holsters and that's something I really paid attention to was the, the overall ride height or you know the, the printability you know if you're gonna be printing while you're carrying um, you know it's personal choice but I think keeping things lower profile, more streamlined looking. You know, I've got, I've already got these beautiful loud belt buckles. So keeping it low profile, contoured better to the front of the body, better for everybody. All right, let's get the belt buckle attached. Love this stuff, Canadian B-Seal. I love it for all my leather conditioning needs. It, uh, it smells good, it's all natural. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. I basically, what I like to do is add a little bit to the hinge. to the threads of the screw just so they don't bind up and never had an issue with the screw coming undone I know a lot of people worry about that but if you're if you're using quality hardware and you're tightening the screws up properly you should not have to worry about the threads backing off So, you know, you, you go through the trouble of using hardware screws to attach a buckle for a customer. And, you know, that does two things. It's, it, uh, it makes it easier to work on. Um, I've had customers send me belts back so they can get them resized because the leather's stretched out, which is a normal thing. Um, instead of, you know, having to punch extra holes and making your tail extra long, you can send it back to me and I can shorten your your uh, your buckle end and have this all looking fresh have that you know still centered in the seven holes so it makes it easier for servicing but also you can always change out your belt buckle you can always change out your belt buckle you know if you don't like that belt or if you like to like accessorize and go from a, an antique brass to a copper buckle you can do that and switch to uh, you know and uh, black buckle I mean this is a double prong but I, you know what I'm saying you know you want to switch to uh, a nickel finish and can do that so there you have it um, this is a grizzly belt 
can smell that Canadian bee seal. It smells so good. Um, this is my this is my wax rag. So you see that line there? Basically, just rub in that excess wax into it. Adds a little bit of a contrast. right here folks it's your grizzly belt antique brass golden rough out this is a hand dyed vegetable tan leather beautiful love it Let's see how it goes through Hole number seven. I mean, <laughs> hole number four of seven. Oh yeah, that looks very nice. Very, very nice. Oh yeah. Every customer gets a handwritten letter, just a handwritten note, um, just from my heart, uh, just thanking you for your support. You know, every every little purchase, you know, you, you, you put food in my baby's bellies and you know, food in my belly, keep the lights on around here, gas in my in my vehicle. Um, you know, and just to keep this this whole thing going. Um, you guys are awesome, you rock. all set up <clears throat> before I package it I always take a product photo for the social medias and just you know same thing just showing what I've been up to consistency accountability and my three-year-old is here good morning where is he I see a good morning I see a Oh, good morning. Daddy, good morning, son. Did you have a good night? Did you sleep good? Yeah. All right. Have a you found me, Dad. pound it, pound it. La 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 la. You found me. I did. All right. I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish this uh, belt for my friend. Okay. All right. I'll be right in, buddy. Let's see. Take you guys over here. you guys how I take my product photos. And then I'll post it up on Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. And uh, now I can go to packaging and shipping it out.
spring loaded. That heavy duty veg tan lighter, it's spring loaded. So you break it in. So your note, customer appreciation note. There you have it, that's what comes in the mail. Well, not completely. And another thing I like to do, pull up my Instagram, go on stories, boomerang action, and A little boomerang action there, I like doing that. Last but not least. Quick reminder, y'all. Quick reminder. Thank you. folks that's how we finish up the package the belt here at the nobleman's workshop what's next got some bunch of things on my plate i'm glad i got that second coat of epoxy on the black water holding tank hopefully that is all we need to do hopefully we don't have to go through and replace anything else or stuff like that um, well, thanks for hanging with me, hanging at the Nobleman's Ranch, a little bit about the Nobleman's Workshop, how I'm doing some of my work, my leather crafting. Uh, if you ride BMX, shout out to any BMXers in the crowd. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's late spring, summer's right around the corner, right at the end of April. Uh, things are going to start heating up. Thanks again for hanging with me. Uh, if you enjoyed it. Hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have a wonderful day, y'all. And remember to stay noble. Stay safe. Shop small.